The research projects of interest in my group uh, fall under the umbrella of what are known as macromolecule metal complexes. So I've already mentioned that polymers or macromolecules uh, represent the main focus of my work. Um, not being a synthetic person, then, we're trying to modify the properties of these materials. And one way, by no means the only way to do it, but modification of uh, the physical and chemical properties of these materials can be obtained through the use of metal complexes so that, for example, uh, just like uh, magnets attract one another, for example, uh, positive and negative poles, uh, the chemistry is right. The ch and that means that there are functional groups in the polymer that are attracted to positively charged metal cations in a metal complex. As a result, uh, the metal is now attached covalently to the side group of the polymer. And that doesn't just happen in one place, for example, but the, uh, the coordination number of some of these complexes is rather large. For transition metal complexes, uh, the first shell coordination sphere, now a little description of what the first shell coordination sphere is, just envision a sphere around a, a central point and uh, how many bonding sites that uh, metal cation can participate in with various ligands. That number is somewhere between four and six for the so-called transition metals. Uh, for those people who are familiar with the periodic table, we're talking about what's known as the D block. Down below that, there's the F block, uh, where the coordination numbers vary anywhere from nine to 12. That means that it's possible for several polymer chains to aggregate via their functional side groups in the coordination sphere of a single metal center. In wastewater sludge, for example, there are, could be heavy metals present in these streams and it would be desirable to remove them. Well, the addition of water-soluble polymers to uh, a wastewater stream would again act like a magnet and seek out these metal cations complexes form, precipitation occurs, and thereby separation would occur, cleaning up wastewater streams. Another example, um, gels form when these various metal cations form nanoclusters with several polymer chains surrounding them on this so-called first shell coordination sphere. When these crosslinks occur at the molecular level, uh, it's somewhat analogous to the chemical cross-linking or vulcanization that's used in the rubber tire industry. This occurs in solution, and at very low concentrations of solids, the entire system forms a gel. Gels can be used to mimic artificial muscles. The presence of metal cations in these gels that could be sensitive to electric fields is not all that different from the way neural impulses cause muscles to contract and expand and movements of the human body, for example. Another future project that involves collaboration with faculty both in chemistry and mechanical engineering can be described as the use of nanocomposites to modify or reinforce polymers using the concept of macromolecule metal complexes again. And the picture is as follows. There are various uh, inorganic or clay-like or silicate-like materials uh, that are layered and structured uh, in which these layers uh, contain or have tethered to them these metal complexes of interest in my research projects. Hence, the metal complex now acts as a link between the side groups of the polymer and these various laminated nanoplatelets that are developed when nanocomposites are produced. Why is that of interest? The reason that's of interest is because, once again, at the nanoscopic level, we're engineering materials that are going to have synergistic properties. In other words, the properties of the material are better than that of any of the species present in the mixture, the complex or the nanocomposite. Here's the reason graduate students might be interested in this type of research. It's definitely an offshoot of mainstream chemical engineering, the types of courses that 
undergraduates are typically exposed to during their undergraduate career. This is now an offshoot onto polymeric material science. There's a lot of thermodynamics, physical chemistry, spectroscopy. Uh, there's relations between macroscopic properties and microscopic structure. And the idea is that um, it would be nice to design materials for practical applications based on their microscopic structure. The structure property relation uh, equation uh, is something that's difficult to quantify, but we're approaching that with these various experiments that are carried out in my lab.